Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the 2004 Super Bowl wardrobe malfunction? This case was covered in a New York Times Presents documentary titled Malfunction, the Dressing Down of Janet Jackson. Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first I'll look at the background in this case, including the timeline of the wardrobe malfunction, then offer my analysis. Janet Jackson started her career as a performer when she was young. She appeared in a number of TV shows like Good Times, Different Strokes, The Love Boat, and Fame before recording albums. She is best known as a singer and has been tremendously successful in that area. The NFL selected Janet Jackson to perform at the halftime show for Super Bowl 36 before changing their minds and going with the band U2. Janet was selected to perform again at Super Bowl 38, along with other musicians like Nelly, P. Diddy, and Kid Rock. MTV was involved in the halftime show as well. The NFL and CBS had strict rules for what could and could not be done during the show, including rules about decency. They wanted this to be a family-friendly halftime show, as usual. They had some concerns about the singers breaking the rules, but Janet Jackson was not really the focus. Rather, the other singers were. This is where Justin Timberlake enters the narrative. Janet Jackson was instrumental in developing the career of Justin Timberlake. He was a member of NSYNC when Janet had that band as an opening act several times on her Velvet Rope world tour. Justin Timberlake was going to be a surprise performer at the halftime show on stage with Janet Jackson. Everybody involved in the show knew about this, but it was kept secret from the public. During the rehearsals for the show, there was this part where Justin was supposed to pull off a tearaway skirt worn by Janet Jackson. This was near the end of one of his songs. The NFL and CBS said, no way, take that out. So that part was dropped from the show. Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake both knew they were not supposed to do that. Now at this point, we see a few different stories about what happened. One report indicates that a stylist working for Janet Jackson purchased what has been referred to as a nipple shield about a week before the halftime show. She told the seller to watch the halftime show because there was going to be a surprise at the end. It appears as though Janet Jackson and her stylist planned this stunt where Justin would rip off some of Janet's clothing. It's not clear if the intent was to expose Janet's red bra or her breast, although the purchasing of the nipple shield leads one to believe that exposing the latter was the plan. This takes us to the halftime show for Super Bowl 38 on February 1, 2004. Janet Jackson sang a few songs before Justin Timberlake appeared on stage with her. They sang his song, Rock Your Body. The performance had several dance moves which were suggestive. For the final line of the song, which is, quote, gonna have you naked by the end of the song, unquote, Justin pulled off part of Janet's costume, exposing her right breast and the nipple shield. Janet looked upset and surprised. Her head was down. The cameras quickly cut away to a wide shot of the stage, then to a shot of the stadium. Janet Jackson's breast was only visible for under one second. After the incident, everybody was scrambling to deny responsibility. The NFL, CBS, and MTV claim they had no idea about the stunt, which was being referred to as a wardrobe malfunction. The incident caused a great deal of outrage. About 150 million people were watching the Super Bowl when it happened. It led to a lot of interest in Janet Jackson. Her name was the most searched term on the internet for both 2004 and 2005. The incident was the most searched event over one day up to that point. The FCC received 540,000 complaints. Not long after the incident, Justin Timberlake responded to criticism by saying, quote, we love giving you all something to talk about, unquote. But then shortly after this, released a statement saying that he was sorry 
about the wardrobe malfunction. Janet apologized as well, saying that the costume stunt was developed after the last full dress rehearsal, and she was completely responsible. Janet said that Justin was supposed to pull away a rubber part of her costume to reveal the red bra underneath. A wardrobe malfunction is what led to the revealing incident. She said that she felt humiliated, but did not think that all the outrage was justified. According to some reports, the CEO of CBS, Les Moonves, wanted public apologies from both Janet and Justin. Otherwise, they would not be at the 46th Grammy Awards, which occurred not long after the Super Bowl. Justin apologized at the Grammys. Janet did not show up. Many people believe that Janet was unfairly treated in many areas, but there are different theories about this. Some argue her career was negatively affected. In 2018, Justin performed at the Super Bowl halftime show. He has had a very successful career. There appears to be a difference in the level of success that Justin has experienced as compared to Janet. Now moving to my analysis. This case brings up a lot of questions about the nature of decency for shows that are being broadcast, the reaction of the public when something goes wrong, the disparity between the treatment of Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake, and of course, the responsibility for the wardrobe malfunction itself. Was this intentional or accidental? I will go through my thoughts on this case, including the items I just mentioned. Item number one is the nature of decency standards. The halftime show was broadcast everywhere. Anyone could see it. I think it's reasonable to have decency standards in place, and those standards should be enforceable. The standards are put in place directly or indirectly by lawmakers who are elected by the people. Super Bowl viewers had expectations about how much of Janet Jackson they would see. She showed them more than expected, which violated the standards. Item number two is the nature of performers. Performers like Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake are often rewarded for shocking people. They are desperate to stay relevant. They want to be prominently featured in the news. Simply being good at their craft, in this case singing, is sometimes not good enough for them. In addition, they seek to push the boundaries of their art form, to try new things, to surprise people. In a way, they try to advance the art form. Some have argued that Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake were not really to blame because they were just ahead of their time, pushing the boundaries of sexual expression. I think in a way that's true, but when the performers take chances, sometimes they fail. Sometimes shocking moments on TV do not lead to systemic changes, rather to chronic embarrassment. This is the risk that performers take when they push or violate boundaries. I don't have a problem with performers taking risks, but they do have to accept the consequences of their behavior when their new ideas don't catch on. Item number three is the reaction of the public. Was it over the top or appropriate? Some have argued the wardrobe malfunction really wasn't that traumatic. It wasn't nearly as disturbing as seeing a bunch of grown men slam into each other at high speeds on the football field. By today's standards, what Janet Jackson did really doesn't seem that serious. Her behavior foreshadowed a trend that would become much more popular over the years. I think the problem here is that the demonstration wasn't expected and it violated the decency standards, as I mentioned. People had no way to avoid it. And even though it was only brief, I can understand why some viewers were upset. If Janet and Justin were performing together at a concert that one of them was holding, I think that would have been much less offensive to the more committed audience that showed up specifically to see them. Another big factor here is intentionality. It seemed like this was planned. If this truly was an accident, I think that would have elicited a different reaction from the public. This brings me to item number four. Who was responsible for this incident? Was it an accident or not? Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake intended to pull off some type of stunt related to Janet's outfit. Clearly, the stunt was supposed to coordinate with these suggestive lyrics at the end of the song, the ones that referenced being naked. The intent of their behavior was to shock people. Their plan deviated from what they were paid to do. It was kept secret from CBS, MTV, and the NFL. 
What's more, someone working for Janet Jackson bought a nipple shield about a week before the incident. In my opinion, there was no wardrobe malfunction. There was a brain malfunction. Two performers planned to do something dramatic, and they followed through with their plan. These were two performers who were attention-seeking. They wanted to mix things up. They were much better at making a bad decision than they were at accepting the consequences. But then they realized they wanted to continue being offered work as performers, so they apologized. Janet wasn't happy with how her career turned out, so she changed her mind and said she regretted making the apology. She felt as though she was being treated unfairly. This brings me to item number five, the disparity in treatment. In my opinion, Janet and Justin were equally responsible for what happened. An argument has been made that Justin's career took off while Janet's career failed, perhaps due to sexism and racism. The question about the disparity in treatment presupposes that Janet's career imploded. But I'm not sure that's what happened. The album she released after the Super Bowl was extremely successful, selling over 3 million copies. I do think that Justin was more successful than Janet, but I don't think they were positioned at extremes, like Justin was a megastar and Janet was living in an alley somewhere. The question about disparity is still valid regardless of how different their careers were. Justin still did better. He quickly bounced back. Janet did not. Why was this the case? I think there are a few reasons. Janet did not seem as willing to take responsibility. She had not apologized to Les Moonves. Therefore, perhaps he did something to impede her career development. The public viewed Janet as more responsible for the incident. I think there was this idea that she was already pushing the boundaries of sexual expressiveness, and they may not have viewed Justin that same way. One could make the case for sexism here. In addition, I think one could make a case for racism. There's no way to know how much sexism and racism influenced this outcome, but I think it's reasonable to believe that both were contributing factors. What lessons can we learn from this case? Lesson number one. When performers violate society's norms, punishments will not always be fairly distributed. Lesson number two, sometimes performers do things without thinking about the consequences because they're so focused on trying to stay relevant and advancing their art form. Lesson number three, there are many ways for artists to push boundaries. The performers in this case chose a very simplistic and lazy approach. It was not creative and it broke their agreements with the companies who were paying the bill. When performers choose to offend people, they have to expect consequences. If they remain truly unapologetic, what they're really saying is that offending people is their right. Those are my thoughts on the wardrobe malfunction of 2004. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis as intriguing as a wardrobe malfunction. Thanks for watching.